belong somewhere. If you're going to be in the prayer department, intercessory, fine. If you're going to be in the music department, good. If you are going to be in the missions group, fine. If you're going to be in the children ministry, excellent. If you're going to be, because in this mission group, we're going to have, like we do have Ilo Ilo missions. If you want to create your own locality missions, for example, Mindanao missions, fine. No problem. I have no problem with all of that. But it must be functional. Important thing is that it is functioning. Because everything God created, God created it to function. Hallelujah. The essence of everything created is for function. If it is not functioning, there is no use. But if it is functioning, then it is useful. You may think your hair is not useful until you shave it off. You will realize it is very, very important. <laughs> so everything in your body is functional. Everything. You know, you may not understand how important these eyelashes are, or eyebrows rather, until you shave it off. Some women go shave it off, and after they shave it, they begin to use pencil to put it back. Isn't that wonderful? They take away the original and they use pencil to make their own temporary one. Everything God created, He created for function. Tell your neighbor, you must be functioning. Pastorina, next, please. So we believe that we receive salvation when we come to God by faith, all right, in the atoning work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Salvation is God's gift to us through his son. It's a gift. But after you have received salvation, you work on your holiness. It's very important. We believe that upon sincere repentance and wholehearted acceptance of Christ, we are justified before God. Yes, justification comes immediately you receive Christ. That's why your garment is changed. Remember the prodigal son? The Bible says a new garment was given to him. That is justification. But after you are justified, don't go and pour oil on that garment again. Hallelujah. That is the Bible. If you pour oil, make sure you wash it. Okay. So, we believe that a genuine change takes place in people who accept Christ as Savior. Believers allow Christ's life to be lived in and through them. So we believe that once you say you have become a Christian, you are now allowing Christ to live out his own life through you. In other words, when people see you in certain ways, they should see Christ. Hallelujah. So these are the passages. We believe and acknowledge that relationships are the heart of God's kingdom. And we will extend grace to fellow believers through ministry, cooperations, and mutual submission in our outreaches. Next, please. So if you read uh, those passages, Haggai, Isaiah, Acts, and Amos, you will find all that. So finally, we believe that a great revival is upon us. A great revival is coming. People are so overwhelmed with the pandemic that people don't see the revival that is coming. Let me ask you, when a great rain is about to come, what happens first? Cloud. Very dark cloud, right? Yeah, the cloud, the, the cloud will become so dark that it's as if it's night. But it's not night. It's just that there is a great rain about to come. And so what you see right now is the dark cloud that is covering because that a great rain is about to be released. So we believe that there is a great revival that is about coming. And this revival, I don't believe it's just a revival of, oh, and then that's it. No, 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 no. It's a revival that will come with heavy transformation with the knowledge, good knowledge of the word of God. Because without the good, strong knowledge of the word of God, a revival cannot be sustained. That's why when you read about revival in the book of Isaiah, chapter 60, where he says, Arise and shine, for the glory of God 
has risen upon you. If you keep reading it down, it says, The knowledge of God shall do what? Cover the earth as water cover the sea. So, a revival without the right knowledge of God is no use. It's going to quickly be blown away by Satan. Because that knowledge of God, that right knowledge of God is what creates the foundation and the structure for that revival to be sustained. It takes structure to sustain revival. And the right structure is the knowledge of the word of God. So we believe that a revival is upon us and we know it's we know this because today the church has become generally worldly and lukewarm in its love for Christ and is in great need of hearing and acknowledging the work of cause God is issuing in many ways such as urging his people to pray like never before in his time where the Father seeks true worshippers and now is when true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and truth for the Father seeks such to worship him. This awakening will create time of refreshing, renewal, and revival on a large scale. And it will be a time of a heartfelt return to God and His commandments. Heartfelt return. People are going to do what? Go back to God. Seek Him. Truthfully. Truthfully. Without bias. Right now there is so much bias. But people, time is coming when people are going to, we, we just want to hear the truth. That's what you'll be seeing. And that's when you know that that revival is come. It's a time when God will pour out His Holy Spirit, drawing the church back to a deeper relationship with Him. And this will result in a fresh and re-energized emphasis on evangelism when many will be converted to Christ. So it is coming. Right now, after this dark cloud is lifted, mm, the rain will come. But now you're having a dark cloud. And people are under pressure because of this dark cloud. Many are now forgetting who Christ is. Different things are going on in different places in the world. Fear, death, scare, and all that. But be strong. Be bold. For the Lord thy God is... That's what God said to Joshua in a very difficult time. He says to Joshua, be bold, be strong. As I was with Moses, I am with you. And the same thing I'm telling all of you. We believe that the presence of God is coming in a very great and mighty way, which will shake the world like never before. So don't give up your faith. Don't be moved from your faith. Know that the Most High is still in charge. God has never lost control of his creation. And he will not do so with you. It, it will also not happen in our time. Hallelujah. So do not be afraid. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. All right. Finally, let us go to the book of Psalm 19. Yesterday, I shared with them what I call the ten great blessings in the word of God. Ten great blessings in the word of God. In other words, when you walk according to the word of God, these blessings will be there. You don't need to pray and fast for it. They will basically manifest. You don't need fasting and prayer for this to happen. You basically live according to the word of God and these things will be happening. That's just the way it is prescribed. Psalm chapter 19, and we will read from verse 6. Okay. Is anybody there? Today we have a lady to read for us. Who is that lady? Yes, go ahead. Give her a microphone, please. Psalm chapter 19, verse 6. Mm. His going forth is from the end of the heaven, mm -hmm. and her circuit unto the ends of it. Mm -hmm. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. Mm -hmm. Nothing is hidden from the heat of the sun. This is talking about the sun. He says, His going forth is from the ends of the earth, and his circuit 
He circles the earth around. Sometimes you don't know that the sun circles the earth. Again, this is another passage that puts in so many things. Uh, realize here, I didn't say the earth is doing the circuit. What is doing the circuit? <laughs> well, what does science tell you? The earth is doing the circuit, right? But here, the sun tells you that the sun is doing the circuit. Okay. So, you know, there are many passages like this. When you find them, you go, oh my goodness. But it is well. Hallelujah. Somebody say it is well. It is well. So he says his going forth is from the end of the heavens and his circuit unto the ends of it. So it starts and it goes round. In other words, no matter where you are, there is nothing that stops the blessings and the glory of God to find you. Irrespective of where you are in this existence, no matter where you are, there's no place that you can hide from the eyes of the Most High. There's no place, whether you are in the depths of the sea, you are, you know, wherever you are, even buried beneath the ground, there is no place that is hidden from the eyes of God. That is what this passage is telling us. That no matter where you are, the heat of the sun will find you. The heat of the sun will find you. The greatest weapon that America is making right now and using right now, they have already set it up is the ability to use the satellite and push the heat of the sun to any nation they want to deal with. Collect that heat and send it to you. That is very bad. Because people will be going crazy. You know, in Dubai, they said in the afternoon, nobody walks. So from 12, everybody goes to sleep and wake up for and come out to work from 5 to 8. Wonderful. Because in the afternoon, sometimes the heat will go to 50. It's going to give many people aneurysm. Brain will be popping. So imagine when we now take that heat and direct it to you. That's a terrible weapon. You, you basically melt everybody there. It's an amazing thing. So, go to verse 7. Let's begin to look at the blessings. In there. Verse 7. And he says, The law of the Lord is perfect. Somebody say perfect. perfect. I have been searching for something. I will say it is perfect in this world. I have not found any. There is nothing made by man that can be called perfect. Everything that man made is having a defect. There is always something wrong somewhere. Everything created and made by man is defective. But here he says the law of the Lord is perfect. And then he does what? Converts the soul. The only thing that brings conversion, that takes you out of death, out of sin, out of iniquity, out of rejection, and makes you holy, makes you wonderful, makes you a beauty to behold in the spiritual, is the word of God. Nothing more. The word. Only the word will convert you. One of my pastors in those days in Onicha was an armed robber. I told you about him before. He was an armed robber that has shot and killed people stealing. But he was in operation and a young girl said to him, Jesus loves you. They were in operation to kill this man and take his money in his home. And the young girl says, you know that Jesus loves you. And he's holding the gun. And crying. This is a man that is this high. If he slaps you, your teeth will be on the floor. <laughs> you. But a young girl said, Jesus loves you. And that was all. That was all. His heart was broken. He was standing and crying. That was the end of the operation. From there, he was a changed man. And left to end up as a pastor. So the word of God converts the soul. I can tell you, nothing can transform your barangay, your community, like the word of God can. Police can be putting people in jail and doing all what not. It's no use. The word of God. Sending ministers into your barangay. Sending evangelists into your barangay. 
and have them preaching and praying and you're going to have transformation in that place. The reason why there are no transformations and conversion happening in certain places is when the church is corrupt and is only talking about titan offering, titan offering, seed faith, titan offering. Then it becomes a problem because then the people are not being changed. The Bible says if you look at him and behold him, you will be changed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The law of the Lord is perfect and it converts the soul. The only thing that can affect the soul of man and convert it is the law of the Lord. Hallelujah. Teach yourself the law of the Lord. Your soul will be converted. Your spirit will be changed. Your personality will be transformed. That's the only thing that brings the transformation. Nothing more. So the first blessing is conversion. Conversion to become good. Conversion to become excellent. Conversion to become productive. Conversion to become beautiful and loving. Comes by the law of the law. Are you in a marriage? And your marriage is suffering and you really want it to be as God created marriage? Apply the laws of God for marriage. Are you in business? Apply the laws of God for business. Whatever you are doing, apply the laws of God for it. You will be shocked what will begin to happen. Let's be very honest. I went to preach in a place and I went to preach about government and ruling. And I used the British government for example. You know that the British people are one of the smallest race in the world. But they colonized two thirds of the world. How did they do it? They read the Bible. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's all. Do you know when King James was translating the Bible, the British people were under oppression of the Rome. Rome. The Pope was controlling everything happening in Britain. And the man had problems with his wife and did not want his wife. And the Pope said, you cannot throw away your wife. Because the wife is working together with the Pope. And the man got angry, okay, in this case, I will throw my wife away and I don't want Catholic church here anymore. He said, well, how do you run churches? He said, I will I have my own people. So the first thing is, get people to translate the Bible to English, because all Bibles were in Latin. You see? So the man got people to translate the Bible to English, threw away his wife, and churches started reading English Bible and holding churches in English. That's how we that's why how we have CMS. Church of England. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, church. That is how it started. It was still under Rome just a few years ago. But all of a sudden they read the Bible and they understood the power where God placed a man in the book of Genesis. He said, Rule, take dominion. They understood the word. And they started applying it. They read the Bible. They saw that wisdom is better than just weapons of war. And they started applying that wisdom. Before you know what is going on. When they come to kill you. They find out you are too strong. They find your neighbor. And sell something to your neighbor. And use your neighbor to get you. Oh yeah. They fought with Ingo for 30 years, could not survive it. They had to go and bring continental force that was made up from Ghana all the way down to Sierra Leone. Overwhelming force. Our neighbors were used to conquer us. What they could not do in 30 years. Wisdom. They read the Bible. What am I trying to say to you? Whatever you are doing, apply the laws of the scripture. If you apply it, it's going to work. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't quit. Don't quit because it failed. No, 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 no. Do it again, but apply the laws of the scripture. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Don't call your husband and harass him. <laughs> call him and cry for him on the phone. Tell him how much you love him. And that thing you are looking for will come out immediately. 
If you call him and harass him and fight, but before you won't get anything. But cry and tell him how much you love him, he will give you much more than you were asking. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's the rule in the Bible. It works. Tell your neighbor, it works. I have tried it, it works. <laughs> it works, so. So, conversion. And the next lesson we see here is that it says the testimony of the Lord is sure. Another word that is amazing. The word sure, when I was trying to look it up, I, 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 I saw something like, you know, settled. That's why we say forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled. In other words, nothing else to be added. Sure. It is stable. Unmovable. It is a strong foundation. It says the testimony of the Lord is sure. And it will make you wise. No matter how foolish a man is, if he's quoting the Bible, he's a wise man. You get what I mean? Because now he is reaching into a wisdom that is higher than the wisdom of the world. When Martin Luther was in prison and he was being charged for breaking the, the, the constitution of America, he says, no, that he's applying the constitution that is higher than the constitution of America. That based on that higher constitution, he is calling for the release of people into freedom. That if the heavenly constitution has granted people freedom, why should you hold them? And he won the case in court. Because that time, America was still doing everything with the Bible. In the law court, you can come with the Bible as your instrument. Apply it. It will make you wise. The testimony of the Lord will make you wise. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Give me the next verse, please. In verse number 8, we see two blessings in verse number 8. So, in verse 7, we have two, two blessings. One is conversion. Next is making wise. In verse 8, two blessings. It says the statutes. Hmm. Statutes. So, first we saw law. And second, we saw testimony. Now we are seeing what? Statutes. It says the statutes of the Lord are right. Rejoice in the heart. Oh my goodness. Whatever God tells you is right. Don't argue it. Do this. Okay, do it. It's right. You will find out later that it is better than anything you can imagine. The statutes of the law, the commands of the law, they are right. They are right. But look at what it does. It will do what? Bring you joy. You cannot do or live your life according to the word of God and have depression. Not possible. In the absence of the laws of the Father. This is why the spirit of depression is thriving around the world today. Because there is the absence of the laws of the Father. Since the statutes of the Father, they are right and they will bring you to rejoicing. You see, when in the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, Apostle Paul was saying rejoice. And again, I say unto you, rejoice. rejoice. He's talking to people that are doing the statutes. Your soul cannot find rejoicing in defeat, in pain, in trouble. No, it's natural. It's natural. That's why in churches today, we find ways to make people laugh. Because they are all going through depression. But after you laugh in church and get out, you go back to your situation. Your depression will catch up with you immediately you leave the door. <laughs> but the only permanent solution is that you bring yourself to live according to the laws of the Father. That is the permanent solution. Hallelujah, somebody. Yeah. Hallelujah. He says, it will rejoice the heart. And then he says, the commandment of the Lord is pure. Oh my God. The only thing, that, you know, in this world, there is almost nothing that you can say it is pure. Go to the welcome supermarket or back and shop and look at pure honey. <laughs> or pure meal. And then, after they write pure, they now begin to give you ingredients. <laughs> then you realize it is not pure. 
In Nigeria, we have the sachet water, we call it pure. And pure is far from it. Because from it, you have ring warm, you have tip warm, you have. It's amazing. That's nothing. But he says the commands of the Father, they are pure. It will not lead you astray. It, there is no way God will mislead you. It's only human beings like me who will mislead you. But God himself, he will not mislead you. But people like me will mislead you. Human beings will mislead you. But God, the commands of God will never mislead you. The Bible says they are pure. They are pure. And they will bring your eyes to enlightenment. Only when the truth is preached that people come to. Wow. I've been reading my Bible. How come I've not seen this? Wow, I've been a Christian for 30 years. How, how, what, what has been going on? Only when you begin to look at it. So take out your short-sighted lens and bring clear-sighted lens. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. See the word for what it is, not what preachers say. He says it will enlighten your eyes. In fact, the word there means to... <laughs> he says set fire on your eyes. Your eyes will burn. Nothing evil will remain. You just burn them out. Hallelujah. Next page. I mean, next, next verse. So the two blessings we saw there is rejoicing and enlightening of the eyes. So the next is the fear of the Lord is clean. Oh my goodness. The Bible says fear has torment. But you can see that this fear does not have torment. This fear is what? Clean. Clean. No trouble. No problems. No addition of anything that will bring you pain. It's clean. When we say fear God, and somebody says, hmm, the Bible says love God, we are saying the same thing. That love God cannot happen without fear God. But the fear that comes from the world, the fear that comes from Satan, the fear that comes from the events of evil going on around us, the Bible says they have torment. But the fear of the Most High Himself, the Bible says it is what? Clean. Clean. And it endures forever. Let me be honest to you. If you don't fear God today, you will die. Those that will fear God will come. What did Jesus say? If you don't prove me, stones will rise up and but for stones to praise him in your position, it means you will be removed. So those that refuse to glorify God, they usually will be removed and another generation will be brought up to glorify him in their position. That's it. Don't you ever let anybody move you away from fearing God. The fear of God is clean. It will bring you to holiness. Bring you to righteousness. Bring you to blessedness. And a beautiful life in your home. The fear of the Lord is clean. And it endures. It endures forever. It is trustworthy. You can trust it. You can rely on the fear of God. You can rely that if you fear God, God will take care of you. You can rely that if you fear God, God will bless you, provide for you. You can rely that if you fear him and do what he said, he will be your ally. Anybody that rises against you, God will rise against that person because he will become your ally. It's best when you have God as an ally. Hmm? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. When God is your ally, oh my goodness. He takes care of things. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Next, he says, it is more to be desired 
than any gold. Yes. Much, much better than fine gold. Sweeter than honey and the honeycomb. <laughs> we were talking about gold before, and somebody was saying that she needs more gold. <laughs> Hallelujah. Gold is good, though. <laughs> somebody say gold is good. Gold is good. I was in Philippines, and, you know, it was a good program. So the power of God really moved that day. And this pastor came to me and said, I can see the power of God moving. It's beautiful. I've not seen this before. I said, really? He said, yes. I said, well, God moves whatever he chooses to move. He said, no, 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 no. I tell you something, pastor. We have gold somewhere. <laughs> With this power of God, you can get the gold. <laughs> I said, really? He said, yes. I said, no, you can also go and take it. He said, no, no, pastor. Everybody go there, die already. <laughs> but with this power of God you have, you can get it. I said, why they die? He said, because many people's spirits live there. The gold is there, but there are spirits. If you go there, they kill you. Because the gold belong to the spirits. <laughs> but with this power of God, I'm sure you can get it. <laughs> and I said, no. This power of God is for converting souls. <laughs> it's not for going to wrestle with spirits to get gold. Hallelujah, somebody. So the Bible says it is much more better to be desired than gold and self. <laughs> and it is sweeter than honey. You know, whenever you think of gold, you think of precious blessings. Gold is one of the most precious metals you have in the world today. People are dying for it here and there. In fact, the world currency used to be pegged on gold. Uh, right now it is no more. But it used to be pegged on gold. You know, the way they measure the wealth of nations was how much gold reserve that they had. But now we have what they call fiat currency. And this fiat currency based on this, uh, 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 what do you call it, um, central bank system. It's completely no use. Anybody can print how much paper he wants and keep. So I said to you, don't leave your money in the bank only. Buy things that are tangible. Yeah. Somebody said, oh, I'm trading gold in the trading. No. Find the real gold, buy it. <laughs> the one you are trading in the internet. <laughs> it's non existent. Hallelujah. Go to Carriedo. All those people, you see them selling gold. Buy gold. Keep it. It never will lose value, it can only gain. Buy land where water will not swallow it. It will never lose value. It can only gain. Hallelujah. Okay. Very important. Food is very wonderful. I was talking to Jim. And we were looking at how so many businesses are not moving on. Because that in this season, necessity is what people think of. So, gas is wonderful. Because if your ketu ketu <laughs> will move, you need gas. If your car will run, you need gas. You won't drive it with your saliva or urine. You need gas. Hallelujah. Yeah. Food is wonderful because no matter what, people will. Can eat. <laughs> People can sell their clothes and go buy food. People can sell their shoe and go buy food. So if you're doing any business related to eating, what am I trying to say? It's good to start small businesses. It's best. In fact, in the few months to come, you will realize why being self-employed will be good. I've been saying, anyway, you know I've been saying this for many years already. 
And so many of our Kababayans have left and started farming and different kinds of things. And some of them are doing well, sending me coffee and stuff like that. Please, start a small scale business, no matter how small. But before you start, don't just say, oh, Pastor Alex, say do business, and then <laughs> check it very well. <laughs> Hallelujah. Do things that you know people will surely need, even though the profit margin is small. Hallelujah. You will not lose your, the money you put in, your capital, but the thing will be growing. In a few years' time, for example, uh, your employer want to pressure you to do something that you don't want to do. If you are self-employed, you can say, well, I don't care. Take your job. But if you're not self-employed, you are in a situation where you don't know what to do. How do you do? So you have to plan your life and make sure you create other streams of income that can help you in case the situation of things goes out. You'll be able to stay east. Because the wise men, we are from there. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Yeah, very necessary. Very, very necessary. Give us verse number 10, please. Enduring wealth. Uh, 11, sorry. So that's the last verse. Verse number 11, he says, Moreover, by them is your servant warned. The word warned here is both advised. Hmm? Is both advised. I did not talk about the honey. Leave this verse. Don't, don't go back. In verse 10, it talks about honey. Honey is sweet. In other words, it's talking about essence of living. You know, in this world, many people have lost the essence of living. Many are living in a funny way. And the, the painful thing is that many of them are those we are looking at. Like movie actors and uh, celebrities and musicians, and, you know, they do all kinds of funny things. And they have become role models for the young generation. And so you find young children, they wear their hand and they pull it down to the tie. <laughs> what is the essence of buying the trouser in the first place? <laughs> if it's not going to be on your waist. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? They are following people that have lost the sweet essence of life. The Bible says the laws of God are like honey, sweeter than the honeycomb. It has got a sweet essence of existence in it. When you live by the laws of the Most High, you will have a sweet essence of living. Life will be worth it. Life will be enjoyable. Life will be something you live and enjoy living. Mm -hmm. If they talk about that, you say, don't worry about that. You see, in those days, those people were living hundreds of years. Yeah. Because they had a code that guided everything they did. And that code is the laws of the Father. Live by them. You will have a sweet essence. You will enjoy life. You will enjoy living. Hallelujah. Amen. And here he says, by your laws, by your statutes, by your testimonies, by your judgments, your servants are guided. This is the same thing that Apostle Paul quoted in Galatians 5.16. If you are guided by the Spirit, led by the Spirit. And he says, when you keep them, there is great I told you, you wouldn't need me to come and do hika ba 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 shandela. I will not need to do that. In keeping them, there is great reward. It works. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, it works. It works. Once you key in into it, it is a rule that works. It works for you. It will basically work for you. Last week we read, if the Gentiles are keeping the law when they didn't have the book, they have become that law. You need to become the law. But how can you become the word of God if you're not keeping it? But not the hearers of the word are accounted worthy, but the doers. Doers. In keeping them, there is great reward. Wow. 
Amazing. Jesus says to Peter, not those that call me Lord, Lord, but those that keep my commandments. And he says, I will give you greater blessings in this life and even in life to come. Everlasting. Great reward. In the book of Hebrews, the Bible says, I think it is Hebrews chapter 6, he that cometh, I mean chapter 11 verse 6, he that cometh unto God must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hebrews 11. Rewarder. In keeping them, there is great reward. What am I trying to say? What if you find yourself in Mindanao where there is no pastor? Or you live in a village and there is no pastor, no bishop ready, nobody around. And then you are waiting for a pastor to pray for the situation. What do you do? You see why we are teaching you this way? Because we know that someday you are going to find yourself in a situation where there will be nobody to pray for you. Yes. Or your children will be in a situation where there will be fire and nobody to pray for them. If you have not taught them like this, what do you do? How do you cope? So in Transformation Assembly, we're not doing superstar pastor's kind of life. No. Jesus is our superstar. Hallelujah. And we all are beholding him face to face, being transformed by him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you are also going to become like him Hallelujah. and live like him. And this works by the word. Code of living. Code of living. In conclusion, I want to say this, as I said it yesterday. Jesus came and lived. He did ministry, and after he died, after he was tormented and persecuted and killed, he was buried. And then, three days he resurrected. And then, he ascended into heaven. Is that correct? How many times did Jesus ascend to heaven? Once. Yesterday I said two times. And I will prove to you now. So, he comes out from the grave. And Mary came, oh, master! And she said, no, don't do what? Don't touch me. I am on my way. I am in transit in Manila. I am traveling. I am on my way to the Father. So, he says, I am yet to go and deposit the authority collected from Satan before the throne of heaven. And then I will come back. Go and tell my disciples that I am risen. You see what happens there? He is yet to report to heaven what has happened on earth. Does it mean heaven did not know? Of course, heaven knew. Heaven knew. But he says, I'm yet to go to the judgment throne. I am yet to get the judgment throne and deposit the authority. Because I have taken the authority from Satan. I am going to deposit it on the judgment seat. And yesterday I said to them, our biggest problem is we think that Satan still has authority over us. As believers, truly giving your life to Christ, Satan don't have any authority over you. Why did the scripture say this? Say to him, get thee behind me, Satan. Why did the Bible say you have power to walk on serpents? and scorpions, and over the powers of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Mark chapter 16. That is in the book of Mark, chapter 16. If you start to read from verse 15, it starts by saying, you know, these signs shall follow them, that believe. Mark chapter 16. 
Say you shall step on serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. Nothing will hurt you. And then he comes down in another passage and says that even though you wrestle, but your wrestling is not with flesh and blood, but against the spiritual powers, principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in high places. But he says the weapons that you fight with are not carnal, but they are what? Mighty, true. To do what? Pull them down. So they have no authority over you. And Jesus again says, I beheld Satan do what? Falling. He's falling. He's lost the authority over you. But because you live in the flesh, you are short-sighted. Because you are influenced with whatever happens in the flesh. This flesh is a temporary house. And whenever it is shaken, we are affected. And that's all. Satan has no authority over you. Jesus has taken that authority and deposited it at the right hand of the Father. And it means Satan cannot get it anymore. Because where it is kept, it is beyond Satan. Get it back. No. It is at the right hand of the Father. And so after he came back, he visited with the apostles and was with them for how many days? 40 days. Why 40 days? Enough time for him to walk around the earth and be seen. Enough time for existence to recognize his presence. Any man that lives up to 40 years, you cannot say he didn't live. Because 40 is the age of authority. Hallelujah. Yeah. In Israel, once a man is up to 40 years, he has right to say whatever he wants to say. He has come of age. He's an elder. Whatever he does is on his own head. Remember the man that his eyes was open. And when his parents were caught, they called him and said, who opened the eyes of your son? He said, go and ask him his own age. <laughs> He's over 40 years. Let him speak for himself. <laughs> because they know if they say it was Jesus, they will be excommunicated. They will throw them out of the church. Hallelujah. So very necessary. Now, after that, Jesus now ascended the second time. The second ascending is the one that they were looking and watching him taking up into the clouds. That is the second ascension. So he ascended what? So in life, in conclusion, you come out in life and you start showing greatness. You start showing beauty. Satan attacks you. And when Satan attacks you, he can come with all kinds of attack. Different ways. It can come from friends, from family. It can come from, you know, rejection. You know, different kinds of things. Whatever you may call it is an attack. And sometimes people fall in this attack never to rise again. Some fall and that's the end of them. But many will fall and which is that dying. And then resurrection will come. And they resurrect. After a while they will dust off that rejection. Dust off the pain, the, the tears and everything. And they say to themselves, I must keep on living. And they rise. That is resurrection. And then they begin to ascend. Ascension there is to get out of that low position of your existence before. You ascend. You, you are lifted higher than your enemies. When ascension happened, Jesus was lifted to heavens. In other words, higher than his enemies. That's ascension. You are lifted. This is a process of that all of us go through. And I'm telling you today, as a believer in Christ, don't allow your life to end with the death. Partake in the resurrection. Because if you ever partake in the resurrection, you must surely ascend above your enemies. Because the same power that brings resurrection is the same power that lives in ascension. Are you with me? So when you have been cast down, please rise from there. Amen. 
The Bible says you may be cast out, but you are not destroyed. You are not. Don't allow yourself to fall and then you stay where you fell. No. Arise from there. Arise. Allow the resurrection power to work in your life. The resurrection power will take you out of that muddy, dirty place and lift you out of that level. An ascension will raise you above the expectation of your enemies. Amen. Those that castigated you and called you names and all that, they will be seeing you. They will be wondering, wow. Wow. Is it not so, 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 and so? They will say, oh, yeah. Say, wow. Wonderful. Life is wonderful. The best answer to critics is success. Hallelujah. The best answer to naysayers is success. Therefore, make sure you succeed in this gift, this life that the Most High has given you. Amen. Don't give up. And I'm saying so because the power is already with you. Amen. Only you can give up. As long as you don't give up, the power will work. Now, remember this. This power works in different ways. It may work for me. In one month. What for somebody else in three weeks. But what for another person in five years. Don't say oh the other person is risen. The other person is why am I still here. No. It may work in this person in two days. Work in this person in two weeks. Work in this person in five days. Your own. Maybe one year. The important thing is never give up. Hallelujah. Because once the whole lump has been leavened, it will rise. The yeast don't work until the whole lump is living. The whole lump has to be living before. That's how it works. Did you understand me? Are you with me? Please rise with me. Let's pray. If you give up, it is your fault. <laughs>